Wow, I didn't expect that, but uh, anyway, here goes. Um, well, I suppose it's Irish theme tonight, right? Um, and uh, so here's probably my favourite Irish song. Um, it's a poem by uh, a fellow called Patrick Kavanagh called Dark Head Miriam Ran Away. But you probably know it better as uh, On Raglan Road. And it was set to music by, uh, I think it was the Luke Kelly of the Dubliners in 1971. The poem that is. So here we go. On Raglan Road On an autumn day I saw the first of you And her dark hair Would weave a snare That I might one day rue I saw the danger And I passed Along the enchanted way And I said let grief be a fallen leaf at the dawn of the day. On Grafton Street in November, we should lightly along the ledge of a deep ravine, lake can be seen. The worth of passion's pledge. The queen of hearts still making tarts, and I not making hay. Oh, I loved too much, and by such, by such, this happens. I gave her gifts of the mind. I gave her a secret sign that's known to the artists who have known the truth. Gods of sand and stone. And word and tint without stint. I gave her poems. On a quiet street where all ghosts meet, I see her walking now. Away from me, so hurriedly, my reason must allow that I had loved not as I should. A creature made of clay When the angel woos The clay it loos His wings at the dawn of day
right, start with an old standard, Graham. Thank you. Um, it's now time for something from Charles West, and he'll be followed by Bob Askew. Well, that's a tough act to follow, Graham, as it often is. I seem to follow Graham once in a while these days as we hang out together in in these Zoom sessions. I was thinking of doing uh, Finnegan's Wake today because it's Irish, but after that, I think I'm going to have to stick to something quiet. So this is uh, this is another uh, of the Clancy Brothers. <laughs> stuff Charles thank you something now from Bob Askew and then it will be David Diamond and Pelagy all right um just caught out of step in um uh, sorry can I just say, I mean David Kidman and Pelagy sorry about that that makes a lot more sense carry on Bob thought better correct that though it's always best to have things correct um I'd like to see, um I don't want. I don't want to sing an Irish song because a lot of people are. So I'm going to sing a song that's collected in Scotland and Northern England. So it's here, two other of our provinces. Uh, this is the the wedding of Robin Hood, and I, I I get upset because Charles didn't put it under Robin Hood, although it has Robin Hood in the title. Uh, he put it elsewhere. But um, Robin Hood only has a bit part, an important bit. It's mainly about two uh, women, the daughters of the king, and their mother dies, uh, and their stepmother has all the power and they all lose all their power because women didn't get much power in those days. And um, interestingly, they sing what they feel and I think this gets them into trouble. I won't say any more. The Wedding of Robin Hood. The king wed an ill woman 
out of some far off land. His daughters too, they stood in awe, but they bravely sat and sang. Then in become their stepmother, so stately stepping in, said, while I live and breathe my breath, I'll get you change your tune. We ne'er sang that song, lady, but we will sing again. And you'll ne'er bear that son, lady, that we we'll leave her love on. And they have cut their yellow hair a bit above their ear, and they are gone to green wood to fare for meat and feed. And they have girt their gay clothing a bit below their knee. And they are gone to Greenwood, if Robin Hood they see. And they have changed their own two names, when they are from the town. The one they call it Nicholas, the other Rogy Round. They had been in the Greenwood, but never a day thought long. Till it fell out on one day that Rogy sang her song. When we were in our father's bower, we sowed the silken seam. Now we tread the green wood, we bear another name. When we were in our father's hall, we wore the burnished gold. Now we tread the green wood, I fear we'll die of cold. Said Robin Hood to little John, when they to them drew near, said instead of boys to carry the bow, three ladies we have here. And they were in the green wood, for twelve months and a day, till Rogie Round grew big with child, as any lady could be. A oh, woe unto my stepmother, cause me leave my home, for now I'm child with child by Robin Hood, and I bear another name. Where will I find a bower woman? And no bower woman is here. Where will I find a bower woman when that dread time draws near? The one was married to Robin Hood, the other to Little John. And it's all on account of their stepmother who calls them leave their home. Wedding of Robin Hood. <coughs> Oh, can't hear this, can't hear that. Oh. Thanks, Bob. Robin Hood makes a, another comeback. We've not had him for a while. Um, thank you. OK, it's time now for David Kidman and Pelagy. And after them, something from Steve Suffolk, please. Which one do you want first, Amanda? Entirely up to you. I've written okay. David down and then you, but uh, uh, you're now in control. <laughs> OK, this one is called The News Where You Are. That's all from us. Now it's time for The News Where You Are. The News Where You Are comes after The News Where We Are. The News Where We Are is the news. It comes first. The news where you are is the news where you are. It comes after. We do not have the news where you are. The news where you are may be news to you, but it is not news to us. The news may be international, national or regional. The news where we are may be international news. The news where you are is never international news. Where you are is not international. 
the news where you are comes after the international and the national news. The news where you are may be national news or regional news. However, national news where you are is not national news where we are. It is the news where you are. If the news where you are is national news, it is only national where you are. The news where we are is national wherever you are. On Saturdays, there is no news where you are after the news where we are. In fact, there is no news where you are on Saturdays. Any news there is, is not where you are. It is where we are. If there is news where you are, but not where we are, it will wait until Sunday. After the news where you are, comes the weather. The weather where you are is not the national weather. The weather where you are comes after the news where you are, and after the weather where you are comes the national weather. Do not confuse the national weather with the weather where you are. The weather where you are comes first, but is lesser weather than the national weather. Extreme weather is news. However, weather that is more extreme where you are than where we are is not news. Weather that is extreme where we are is news. Even if extreme weather where we are is only average weather where you are. On average, weather where you are is more extreme than weather where we are. Tough shit. Good night. The news where you are. James Robertson. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
to our Hiroshima home. This is the war to end all wars, they said. This is the last, the final call. We'll never take that road again, they said. But the truth makes liars of us all. They came by night, by river at Dakhanro, through dark and deadly forest, seen with their strangers' eyes. At Tumurong, the battleground was bloody, a hundred brave Americans, each one too young to die. Their shattered dreams, betrayed by those who loved them, impoverished and empty, they struggled every day. Homecoming seems a million miles away now. When the neighbours will not listen, and they turn their face away. This is the war, to end all wars, they said. This is the last, the final call. We'll never take this road again, they said. But the truth makes liars of us all. And so it goes, this endless round of sorrow from the ravaged streets of Najaf to the starving at Darfur. Can we not see that when man abandons reason, the cause is lost and no one knows what they're fighting for? How can it change? Oh, will the anger ever leave us? Will the warlords drop their weapons? Or will the conflict soon be done? Or will they reign? And their power overwhelm us? And we have to face our enemy a generation on. This is the war to end all wars, they said. This is the last, the final call. We'll never take this road again, they said. But the truth makes liars of us all. Yes, the truth makes liars of us all. War song, uh, Oh, fuck. <coughs> Let me see. Powerful song, <clears throat> pardon me, a powerful song there, David. Very powerful, yeah. Um, okay, it's something now from Steve Suffet and then Marty Stock. I shall unmute myself. I see all the comments about camping. I wanted to put up some pictures of the bears that we've had in our campsite occasionally, but I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, the song I'm doing is not at all Irish. It's an African-American song that derived from an English ballad. However, the name of the narrator is Irish in there. I don't know how that happened, but it did. It was down in old Joe's bar room. 
on the corner by the square. You know, all those drinks, they were served round like usual. And the regular crowd was there. On my left, there was Big Joe McCaffrey. And his eyes was bloodshot red. As he turned to all the boys in the barroom. Well, you know, these are the very words that he said. I went down to that St. James Infirmary. I saw my loving baby lying there. She was stretched out on a long white table. So cold, so pale and fair. I went up and I spoke to the doctor. Your gal is very low, is what he said. I come back to see my honey baby. Good Lord, she was lying they're dead. Let her go, let her go, God bless her. Wherever she may be, she can travel this world or the next one. But she'll never find a man as sweet as me. So when I die, I want you to bury me in my hat, I stands in hat. Put a twenty dollar gold piece on my watch chain, so the Lord will know that I died standing pat. Get me six good crap shooters for my pallbearers. Get me a chorus girl to sing me a song. Put a jazz band on my hearse wagon. And we'll raise hell as we march along. Well, now that you heard my sad story, I'll take another shot of the booze. And if anybody should happen to ask you, just say that I got the gambler's blues. St. James Infirmary Blues, also known as the Gambling Blues, by that great songwriting team of traditional and anonymous. <laughs> <laughs>
and your sister Bridget and Patrick O'Donnell are going to be married in June. Your mother says not to work on the railroad and be sure to come on home soon. Kill Kelly, Ireland, 18 and 70, my dear and loving son John. Hello to your missus and to your four children. May they grow healthy and strong. Michael has got in a wee bit of trouble. I suppose that he never will learn. Because of the dampness, there's no turf to speak of. And now we have nothing to burn. And Bridget is happy you named a child for her, although she's got six of her own. You say you found work, but you don't say what kind, or when you will be coming home. Kill Kelly, Ireland, 18 and 80, dear Michael and John, my sons. I'm sorry to give you the very sad news that your dear old mother has gone. We buried her down at the church in Kilkelly. Your brothers and Bridget were there. You don't have to worry, she died very quickly. Remember her in your prayers. And it's so good to hear that Michael's returning with money he's sure to buy land. For the crop has been poor and the people are selling at any price that they can. Kill Kelly, Ireland, 18 and 90, my dear and loving son John. I suppose that I must be close on to 80. It's thirty years since you're gone. Because of all of the money you send me, I'm still living out on my own. Michael has built himself a fine house, and Bridget's daughters have grown. Thank you for sending your family picture. They're lovely young women and men. You say that you might even come for a visit. What joy to see you again. Kill Kelly, Ireland, 18 and 92, my dear brother John. I'm sorry I didn't write sooner to tell you that father passed on. He was living with Bridget, she says he was cheerful and healthy right down to the end. Oh, you should have seen him playing with the grandchildren of Pat McNamara, your friend. And we buried him alongside of Mother down at the Kilcally churchyard. He was a strong and a feisty old man, considering that his life was so hard. And it's funny the way he kept talking about you. He called for you at the end. Oh, why don't you think about coming to visit? We'd all love to see you again. Song. Beautiful. What a poignant song. Brilliantly done, Marty. Thank you. Okay. Um, so now it's uh, one from Hazel, please. And after Hazel, Jim Lucas. Okay. Hi. Thanks. Uh, 52 weeks ago, it was going to be me emceeing at Sharps, and um, I don't know what I was going to sing then, but... Um... You're welcome to take over. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, thanks. And uh, last night, 
and the Herga Folk Club remembered its 50th week of Zooms. And so we had to do songs with gold or something in them. And I thought, well, everybody else will do Fields of Gold and other gold songs. And I thought I'll do After the Gold Rush. So if anyone, I don't think anyone here was at Herga last night, maybe Rory, but um, yeah. Well, I dreamed I saw the knights in armor coming, saying something about a queen. There were peasants singing and drummers drumming, and the archers split the tree. There was a fanfare blowing to the sun that was floating on the breeze. Look at Mother Nature on the run in the 1970s. Look at Mother Nature on the run in the 1970s, I was lying in a burned out basement with the full moon in my eyes. I was hoping for a replacement when the sun burst through the skies. There was a band playing in my head and I felt like getting high. Thinking about what a friend had said, I was hoping it was a lie. Thinking about what a friend had said, I was hoping it was a lie. Well, I dreamed I saw the silver spaceship flying in the yellow haze of the sun. There were children crying and colors flying or around the chosen one, all in a dream, all in a dream. The loading had begun. Flying Mother Nature's silver sea to a new home in the sun. Flying Mother Nature's silver sea to a new home. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely stuff, Hazel. Thank you, Hazel. Haven't heard that one before. Great that you brought it. Um, okay, something now from Jim Lucas and then Martin Neal. Feels all right. I've decided to play a couple of tunes which, strangely enough, are Irish. <laughs> My fingers got lost. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm glad you found your fingers again. They were not gone for long. <laughs> A lovely tune, thank you. Okay, it's time now for Martin Nail and then something from Sheila Miller. Righto. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, I'll have a sip of this. Mm, by the margins of an ocean, one morning in the month of June, the sweet feathered warbling songsters. Their charming notes a so sweet did tune. I overheard a female most seeming in great grief and woe, conversing with young Bonaparte concerning the bonny bunch of roses. Oh. Oh, mother, says young Napoleon, um, as he took his mother by the hand. Oh, mother, pray have patience until I'm able to command. I will raise a terrible army and through the frozen lands I'll go, and in spite of all the universe, I will conquer the bunny bunch of roses. Oh, oh son, don't speak so venturesome, for in England there are hearts of oak, and England, Ireland, and Scotland, their unity has never been broke. Oh, son, think of your father in St. Helena, his body lies low, and you might follow after him. So beware of the bonny bunch of roses, all, oh, for he had ten hundred thousand men, and kings there were to swell the throng. He was so well provided for, enough to sweep the world along. But when he came to Moscow's gates, he was overpowered by the driving snow. And Moscow was a burning then, so he lost the bonny bunch of roses. Oh, it's mother adieu for ever, for now I rest my weary head. If I'd lived, I might have been clever, but now I'm on my dying bed. 
But what's the malta and the weeping will all over me grow the deeds of bold Napoleon will sting the bonny bunch of roses Good bit of history, Martin. Uh, possibly the um, unity shall never be broke. Uh, it hasn't got long to last, but anyway. Um, uh, Sheila Miller is next, and then Maggie and Pete. Um, I was hoping to sing one for Mac, but uh, he's not with us, so I will sing, sing something Irish. This is a short song written by Dominic Bean. Um, even though it's a, a written song, it has developed uh, kind of variations. There are a few phrases that some singers sing differently. And um, I know this from the singing of, of the late, great uh, Al O'Donnell, um, whom I used to hear sing it quite a lot. Uh, and he used the first verse as a chorus, which, um, which actually means you get more chorus than verse because it's a, it's a very short song. But uh, I think I'll do that because it is still quite short. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh, have you been to Avondale and lingered in her lovely vale, where tall trees whisper low the tale of Avondale's proud eagle? Where fame and ancient glory fade, such was the land where he was laid. Like Christ was thirty pieces paid for Avondale's proud eagle. Oh, have you been to Avondale? and lingered in her lovely vale where tall trees whisper low the tale of avondale's proud eagle long years that green and lovely glade had nursed parnell our grandest gale and oh sorry and cursed the land that has betrayed fair avondale's proud eagle oh have you been to avondale and lingered in her lovely vale where tall trees whisper low the tale of Avondale's proud eagle, Dominic Bean. Dominic Bean. Right, Avondale. Thanks, Sheila. Another one I've not heard. There's all lots of songs I've not heard every evening. Um, so yeah, great. Um, all right, now something from Maggie and Pete, and then it will be time for John White. Thank you. Um, I knew we'd hear a lot of wonderful Irish songs and tunes tonight. This one has a fairly tenuous link. Um, are you ready? Yeah. Let's have it. Dad was never easy. He was a complicated man. We didn't call them issues then, but nowadays we can. Moods came and went like breezes, and his tempers left us crying. Although he couldn't hold his drink, he never gave up trying. He was a hero and a bastard and a campfire singer too. He'd like to have been a cowboy, although he was a Jew. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Dad took lots of chances, but he never put them back. 
He made lots of friends, but he was regularly sacked. He told good jokes and stories and improved them bit by bit, and only lied about his past when he was ashamed of it. He'd been a paratrooper, was a bullshit artist too. He'd like to have been Irish, although he was a Jew. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Dad collected pals like Cowboy Al and Beat Nick Abel. At Louie's restaurant in Chinatown, we'd get a kitchen table. He'd take all the kids for ice cream. We were going, so I wasted. 31 flavors at Baskin Robbins, and they let you taste it. And the battlefields were money, love, respect, and so much more. Mom had had enough surprises when he died at 44. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. When grief and shock had settled in, and some time had passed, we did not begrudge Mom meeting someone else at last. Dad had had broad shoulders, and his eyes and hair were brown. Bob brought a key for the toothpaste tube, and he was from a Midwest town. And Bob was bold and pear-shaped, and his eyes were blue. He was a school psychologist, and he'd never been a Jew. I, I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. It took some dedication to put up with Gran and us. It was not all bad that he was not dad, and we tried not to fuss. But when we went for ice cream to the Baskin Robbins shop, it was manifestly evident that he was not our pop. For when they asked if he would like to try a spoon or two, Bob said, no thank you, a vanilla cone will do. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. They had pistachio and rocky road and coffee and black cherry, butterscotch, mint, chocolate chip, maple and strawberry, and flavor of the month. You could try three before you choose. What was the matter with the man? What did he have to lose? He must have brought some peace that I could never understand. When my mother came to choose a vanilla choosing man. I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. He must have brought some peace that I could never understand. When my mother came to love a vanilla only man. My dad would start out pretty much every St. Patrick's Day a bit belligerent and jealous and come home late, drunk, always knew more verses of Kevin Barry than anybody else in the bar who's a huge Nancy Brothers fan. <laughs> and up. Uh, uh, whatever. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Uh, Maggie, of, of all your songs, that really is one of my favourites. Vanilla Choosing Man. I love it. Um, okay, um, it's time now for something from John White and then Tara to follow John. Right. Well, I think most of you know I've got a, another birthday coming up next week. And so I thought it would be topical to do this light-hearted little song from uh, Pete Seeger. Old age is golden, I've often heard said, but somehow I wonder when I crawl into bed, my ears in the drawer, my teeth in a cup, my eyes on the table until I wake up. As sleep claims my vision, I as sleep claims my, my vision. I wonder what's next. Uh, I wonder what else I should leave on the shelf. But nations are warring and business is vexed. So I'll stick along to see what happens next. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went. 
but never you mind and never you fret. I, when I think of the places my get up has been. When I was young, my slippers were red. I could kick up my heels right over my head. As I grew older, my slippers were blue, but I could still dance the whole night through. Now I am old, my slippers are black. I huff to the shops and I puff my way back. But never you fret, I don't mind at all. I sooner be puffing than not puff at all. For how do I know my use is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went. In spite of it all, I'm able to grin when I think of the places my get up has been. Last verse, if I remember it. <laughs> I, I wake up each morning and gather my wits. I look through the papers, read the obits. And if I'm not there, I know I'm not dead. So I eat a good breakfast and go back to bed. How do I know my youth is all spent? My get up and go has got up and went. But in spite of it all, I'm able to grin. When I think of the places my get up has been. Peace hey. Great stuff. Hey. Great choice. John White amply demonstrating that his get up has not left yet, not yet left him. Um, thank you, John. Um, over to Tara now. And after Tara, something from John Poe. Hiya. Um, as you said, John, your birthday is next week. And so I thought I'd get in before the rush and, uh, and just tell you how much I'm happy to know you. Um, and if it, uh, I, I was remembering the first time I went to Sharps and uh, it was a long time ago and in the early days when I used to go to Sharps uh, I remember you singing lots of different songs and I remember particularly you singing uh, If it wasn't for the asses in between and I thought to myself as it's your birthday I'd love to give you a big hug if it uh, wasn't for the Covid in between social distancing and all that jazz and um, and I thought about it, and I thought, well, I'll make you a cake. So I made you a cake. Here it is. It's chocolate, banana, and cinnamon. And I could have sent it to you um, if it wasn't for the Brexit in between, which makes sending anything to Britain absolutely incredibly expensive at the moment and means filling in all sorts of forms. And then I thought to myself, well, that's fine. I can light you a candle. And uh, there you go. Look. There you go, beautiful. And uh, I can sing you happy birthday, happy birthday, but everybody will do that at Sharps later, so I won't do that. And, um, and I thought to myself, you could blow it out, but it's a little bit far away, but you could blow it out if it wasn't for the channel in between. Anyway, anyway, luckily, thanks to Sharps in Isolation, we get to see you, and it's so nice to be able to see you every week. I feel like I learn something every time. I just, uh, it's a real pleasure. I don't know how you managed to do it, <laughs> but I'm so glad to see you all again and everybody at Sharps. And uh, I wouldn't be able to do that. In fact, it's kind of thanks to COVID, but I wouldn't be able to see any of you at all if it wasn't for the Sharps in isolation in between. So thank you very much to Sharps, to John, to everybody. I'd like to uh, say a little toast to you, John. And uh, I hope you don't mind. It's, it's actually just water with a, a piece of lemon in it. Um, I'm sure other people have got alcohol. So here's a toast to John White. Happy birthday for next week. And we all love you very much. Thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know you're getting old when the candles cost more than the cake. <laughs> 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 oh, 
a monologue in the music hall tradition. Well done, Tara. <laughs> okay, um, something now from John Paul. Sorry, I had to follow that, John Paul, but I'm sure you'll do admirably. And uh, after John, uh, something from David Diamond. I'm not muted now. Hello. 50 years ago, I wrote a song which I've often sung since, and uh, John White will know it. By the way, I spoke to John Foreman today, and he sends his love to everybody he knows at Sharps, and especially to John White for next week. Uh, and John Foreman, of course, used to work as a as a um, as an assistant to a Punch and Judy man. And this is my song, Punch and Judy. I am the showman and on me back I carry me actors in me pack A puppet showman, that's me, yours truly and the stars of my show are Punch and Judy. It's the way to do it, says Punchinella. I'm back and look, knows he's a comical fella. And the fuss comes up, his old Punch is self. Ladies and gents, says he is your good elf. He carries his big stick. Wherever he goes, it's thick and strong, and as long as his nose, it's a way to do it, says Punchinella. Big stick and long nose, symbolic old fella. Next up comes Judy, Punch's old lady, saying, I'm all felt now, Punch, so mind the baby oh no i won't says punch yes you will says judy cop old your kid my lad none of your old moody it's the way to do it says punch in ella cocks your bar and pecked pathetic old fella well the kid keeps howling old punchy thumps it it pulls, he belts it into bed, he dumps it. It cries, he calms it down, it bites his finger. Punch ups and bungs it through the blooming window. That's the way to do it, says Punchinella. That'll learn the bleeding brat to yell and bella. As Mrs. Judy now come back again, not knowing Punch has done the nipper in. Where's baby Punch, he says, gone, gone to sleep, says he. Don't you know where your own son is? You make me weep, says she. That's the way to do it, says Punchinella. Oh, throw him out the window, says he has to tell her she cries her heart out where's my little son gone says punch there's plenty more where that one come from with a stick she bangs and beats him something lovely he gets it clubs her kills her kicks her ugly that's a way to do it says Punchinella. Why keep a wife you ate if you can kill her? Up jumps a copper, all dressed in blue. Saying, Mr. Punch, I am a rest in you. I got a warrant to take you up for what you done. And I got a warrant, says Punch, to knock you down. That's the way to do it says Punchinella, kicking him ass over it straight down the cellar. Well, the law soon catches him again, and in a while, 
Before Judge Black, Cappy stand in trial. Killed wife and child, says he, you guilty wretch. Take Punch away and hang him, Mr. Ketch. That's the way to do it, says Punchinella. Hang them all, but don't hang me, he cries in terror. See this here noose, says Punch, poke your head through. Oh, Punch, let's on, he don't know what to do. In here, Mr. Ketch, says he, or perhaps in there. Hang about, the hangman says, I'll show you where. That's the way to do it, says Punchinella. Stringing up the hangman, he's a swinging old fella. Jack Ketch is dead, he cries, hurrah, hurrah. I'm free. Don't care if the devil himself should come and call on me. Jack Ketch is dead, he says, oh, Punch will do them all. Up pop, pops the devil himself, tail horns and hooves and all. That's the way to do it, says Punch in Ella. Hang about, I'm your best friend, we're birds of a feather. The devil don't have and have in it. The punch get the, the, the grabs himself a stick, but punch keeps grabbing it. He aims a mighty swipe at Satan's not um, The devil's out for the count as dead as Martin. That's the way to do it says Punchinella. He's killed the devil himself. The show is over now. Me dolls need mending, but Punch and Punch's play is ever ending. In every soul alive, there's a Punch and a Judy. In you, sir, you, ma'am, too, and me, yours truly. That's a way to do it. Punch and Judy. Thank you, Frankie. She went out with some of the fine faces. Brilliant stuff, John. Brilliantly performed and written. That's the way to do it. So, um, Okay, now it's over to David Diamond and then something from Steve Andersaw. I thought that I would do a, a little recitation uh, as I'm very fond of doing that sort of thing. Uh, I had an Irish song, but I forgot to practice it and I won't impose that on you. Instead, uh, well, I would have sung a sea shanty, but I think they need a chorus, so I will tell you the story of the very first shanty man, uh, which is uh, a, a classical tale, uh, which you will hear shortly. The first shanty man. You ladies who have searched for love but found rejections frown. Go find yourself a shanty man. He'll never turn you down. If you would know the reason, reveal to you I can the sad and sordid story of the world's first shanty man. A ship she lay against the quay. The Argo was her name with a crew of randy villains, oh, I mean, heroes of great fame. But none of them could hold a tune, or even sing a song. So Jason asked if Orpheus would like to come along. Now, Orpheus was the kind of bloke who would not refuse a friend. So though he did not want to go, he signed on in the end. His music charmed the fishes, it charmed the sharks and whales. 
and when the Argo was becalmed, charmed wind into the sails. The sirens sweetly sang their song, our heroes for to kill. But Orpheus simply grabbed his harp, and he sang sweeter still. Through many another danger, he helped the Argo slip, even though they were short-handed, because Hercules jumped ship. The voyage really was a flop. You'd have thought that they were cursed. They never found the Golden Fleece. Bernie Madoff got there first, and Orpheus said, Though I got fame, success, and money too, never again will I take a job that I didn't want to do. Just then, his fan club entered, each female mad with lust, unattractive in her frenzy as the backside of a bus. The designs they had upon him seemed a face, fate, than death more grim. So the silly bugger turned them down, and they tore him limb from limb. There's a moral to this story, as any shantyman can tell, and every shantyman since then has learnt the lesson well. So, ladies, if you're Randy, to the harbour come you down and find yourself a shanty man. He'll never turn you down. I like this story, David. Thank you very much for that. It's something now from Steve Andersaw, possibly Anders Rabbit as well. And then Paul Steele, please. <clears throat> Rabbit's going to do a tap dance. <laughs> this is a, a song which was first recorded in 1934 by a soap powder sponsored country and western band called, wait for it, the Oxydoll Pioneers. It's a nice jolly song about an industrial disaster. Not a lot of them. In the year of 89, on that old Chicago line, when the winter winds were blowing trill, the track was froze, the wheels were cold, and the air brakes wouldn't hold. Number nine came rolling down the hill. And the runaway train went down the track she blew, she blew. The runaway train went down the track she blew, she blew. The runaway train went down the track, the whistle widened the drop, the button she blew, 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 blew. The engineer said the train must halt, she blew, she blew. The engineer said the train must halt, she blew, she blew. The engineer said the train must halt, he said it was all the fireman's fault. She blew, 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 blew. The fireman said he rang the bell and she blew, she blew. The fireman said he rang the bell and she blew, she blew. The fireman said he rang the bell, the engineer said you did like, and he blew, 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 blew. blew. The porter got an awful front, she blew, she blew. The porter got an awful front, she blew, she blew. The porter got an awful front, he got so scared his face turned white. Right. Blue, 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 blue. Oh, Mr. Porter, what shall I do? I want to go to Birmingham and be taking me off the crew. Take me back to London as quickly as you can. Oh, Mr. Porter, what a silly girl. A conductor said to be such a rocket she blew, she blew. Conductor said to be such a rocket she blew, she blew. Conductor said to be such a rocket he felt the chill run down his neck. She blew, 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 blew. And the 
runaway train went over the hill and she blew, she blew. The runaway train went over the hill and she blew, she blew. The runaway train went over the hill as far as I know she's going still. She blew, she blew, 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 blew. We've had a real steam of uh, um, seam of cheerfulness. <laughs> Will Paul still carry it on? I don't know. Um, Paul, it's over to you, and then something from Mary Hogan after Paul. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to follow that something a bit more miserable, I'm afraid. <laughs> but relevant to today. Every time you start a war you think you might get more but it's not long before you forget what for There's no returning through that one-way door And it's the young ones who pay It's the young ones who pay It's the young ones who pay At the end of the day It's the young ones
all that wiped out, all the cheerfulness in a one-hour poll. Well done. <laughs> okay, um, it's Mary Hogan now, and then it will be Riggy Rackin to finish off the first half, I think. Okay, over to you, Mary. Hello, everyone. Um, a few weeks ago, I heard a song here, um, here at Sharps that I liked a lot. Um, I had never heard it previously, and um, so I learned the song, and that's the song I'm going to sing. So it was sung by Alison Frostick, and it's called uh, Carnlough Bay. When winter was brawling o'er high hills and mountains, and dark were the clouds o'er the deep rolling sea, I spied a young lassie as daylight was dawning. She was asking her road to sweet Carlow Bay. Well, I said, my wee lassie, I cannot well tell you the number of miles or how far it might be. But if you permit me, I'll go along with you and I'll show you the road to sweet Carlock Bay. She kindly consented and gave me her arm. In through the churchyard and down by the sea, we listened a while to hear the sad wind cry as we journeyed the road to sweet Carnlough Bay. At length, with the high hills and mountains behind us, the boats and the harbour in full view did see. She said, gentle sir, I will never forget you for showing me the road to sweet Carnlough Bay. Well, I took a gold pin from the scarf at my bosom. Take this sweet lassie in remembrance of me. She lifted her lips and I kissed them right strongly as we said our farewells at sweet Carnlough Bay. So here's to the lassie, I will never forget her. Her sweetness and beauty so charming to me. My heart gives a leap when I hear the sad wind cry, and I journey the road to sweet Carnlough Bay. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, how nice to know that um, Sharps in Isolation has brought you that song um, to add to your repertoire, Mary. Great stuff. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, so now um, over to Riggy to close the first half. After Riggy, we will have um, brief parish notices and then a short break. Over to you, Riggy. Okay, thank you so much for including me in this in the first half. And uh, before uh, the St. Patrick's Day, I am going to do... Uh, a song by uh, a Galway traveling man named Tony Small, passed away five years ago or so. Great songwriter. I encourage everybody here to go look up Tony Small from uh, Galway. Tearing right, tearing, tearing away. There's a fair in Balahi this fine summer's day. Tearing full, tearing, tearing away. There's a fair in Malahi this fine summer's day. I will not speak unkindly 
The solder and tin of the great traveling craftsman, John Martin or Jim, not lazy or polished. Like some settled men, A and B are with freedom, our ways and our women. Tearing, right tearing, tearing the way. There's a fair in Balahi this fine summer's day. Tearing, full tearing, tearing the way. There's a fair in Balahi. This fine summer's day. Farewell to the cubbies round Westport, Mayo. We'll travel through Shandon to Ballinasloe, to the wall town of Galway, and southward hooray. We'll speed through the banner through Milltown, Malbay. We'll deal at the Spansel, and then we'll head south to the kingdom of Kerry or Calaglin, no doubt. We'll talk of our travels with our own kith and kin and uncles and cousins. There's hundreds of them. We'll make no great army, not Kerry nor Clare. There's no need to worry, we always get there. To fulfill the promise, we're destined to go and spend the wild winter on the bogs of Mayo. Oh, turning right, turning, turning away. There's a fair in Balaki this fine summer's day. Turning, full turning, turning, hooray. There's a fair in Balaki this fine summer's day. Tony Small. Good one to finish the first half with. Thanks, Riggy, um, and on point with St. Patrick's Day. Um, so I'm now just going to, and Helen will be followed by Severn Savage, please. So over to you, Helen. Okay, can everybody hear me? Because I'm actually singing through the air rather than and the microphone of the my iPhone. Okay, this is very exciting. Let me see if I can put the correct glasses on my eyes. I was going to sing this last week, but I had technical difficulties. Um, it's still March, so it's still Women's Month. And the song wasn't sung last Tuesday, um, closer to International Women's Day, but it still holds true. As we go marching, marching in the beauty of the day, a million darkened kitchens, a thousand mill walks gray, are touched with all the radiance that a sudden sun discloses. For the people hear us singing, Red and roses, red and roses. As we, as we go marching, marching, we, we battle to for men. For they are women's children. Let the mothers speak again. Our days shall not be sweated from birth until our life closes. Heart, hearts starve as well as bodies. Give us bread, but give us roses. As we go marching, marching, on unnumbered, unnumbered women dead, go crying through our singing, their strident call for bread, small art and love and beauty, 
their trudging spirits knew. Yes, it's great that we fight for, but we fight for roses too. So we go marching, marching, and the people hear our song. Wait a minute. <laughs> the people hear our song. Oh, I'm sorry, I got lost here. Stop. And so we go marching, marching, and the people hear our call. The rising of the women is the rising of us all. We walk no more the drudge and idler. Tend that toil where one reposes, but a sharing of love's glories, a sharing of life's glories, red and roses, bread and roses. As we go marching, marching in the beauty of the day, a million darkened kitchens, a thousand mill lots gray, are touched with all the radiance that a sudden sun discloses. For the people hear us singing, bread and roses, bread and roses. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. I'm glad you got to sing it this week. And it's good to continue uh, International Women's Month uh, in, that, in that vein. Okay, um, now something from Severn Savage. And after Severn, it will be time for Bob Wakeling to take the floor. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. Red and Roses. It's, uh, uh, my organic baker told me that they, they, they were... Uh, yeah, whole green thorns in there. So that's, that's what those things were in my bread. Anyway, uh, I'm going to sing, yeah, I'm going to sing an Irish thing here. It's, uh, it's left over from, uh, you know, Percy French, but, uh, uh it's about canals um, and proves an Irish canal song has same jokes as any other nation's canal song. That um, come all you lads that plow the seas and likewise seize the plow. The crews of a canal boat I'll be singing to you now. Tis of the Mary Ann McHugh that plowed the wintry surf, and she bore away from George's Cay with a terrible load of turf, and the captain's name was Duff, and his manner was quite rough, and every cove and headland on that treacherous port he knew, but he issued this command. Keep her well in sight of land till we reach the port of Dublin in the Marion McHugh. Now this vessel was of one horsepower propelled by a blackthorn stick with a load of corn and a wind astern. That horse was terrible lick. We came around by hilly down and then kill cut we passed. And when we seen Johnny Quinces in, we hollered, land at last. The captain James E. Duff, he said, Luff me boys, now luff, and don't pull into Johnny Quinn's, no matter what you do. For last time we passed his door, we forgot to pay the score. Now they have the police watching for the Marianne McHugh. Well, up there spoke a sailor bold who sailed on the Irish Sea. 
He said, pull into Johnny Quinn's or the crew will mutiny. For to go to sea with a boy as it me is a terrible thing, I think. With water, water everywhere. And Jill would drop the drink. And the Captain James, he doth said enough, me lad, enough. There is no man before the mast can teach me what to do. So clap on all sails at once, for it is our only chance to keep from death and danger in the Marianne McHugh. So with anxious hearts, this vessel starts upon her watery course. The wind at last the rigging and the pilot lashed the horse. It was all in vain, for from the strain the rope began to part. And she ran aground on the inevitable lump of coal that wasn't marked on the chart. And the Captain James E. Duff, well, he gave me such a cuff. And then he said, go heave the lead, while the flag at half-mast flew. But by then I'd had enough, that tyrant James E. Duff. So I hove the lead at his head and fled from the Mary Ann McHugh. Thank you. You seem to be getting a preview. I'm not sure who that is. Um, thank you, Severn. Um, good to hear you this week. Uh, I know you missed out last week, so thanks for coming back. Okay, it's time now for Bob Wakeling. And after Bob, something from Alison Frosdick, please. I'll be wanting to unmute Bob. Bob? Unmute. That's you. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> this is, um, oh my God, what's it called? Oh yes, The Apprentice Boy. This is from <clears throat> the singing of Cahill McConnell. Um, and I think Roisin White has also done a version. Um, what you have to understand, if you wonder why the apprentice goes to ask advice of his captain is that the apprentices then were probably only 12 or 13 years old. <clears throat> oh, if I can think of the first line now. Yeah. Mm. When first I went to sea, apprentice bound, I sailed the salt sea, all round and round. I scarce had travelled a voyage but one, when I fell in love with my charming Anne. I went to my captain, both stout and bold, and unto him my secret told. I love this lass as I love my life. What would I do if she'd be my wife? Well, the captain said, you're a foolish boy. Or to court a girl that you'll ne'er enjoy. For she'll have sweethearts when you're at sea and she'll be married when you are free. Well, I don't know, but I'll go and try, for she might fancy an apprentice boy, and she might alter her mind for me and carry back for to wait on me. Well, I bought her rings and I bought her gloves, 
the things that grew from a heart that loves. She accepted all of them, but she was not shy. And she vowed she'd wait for her apprentice boy. When my ship is anchored and my voyage is o'er, I'll steer my bark to sweet heaven's shore. In my native country, my love I'll enjoy. And she'll welcome home her apprentice boy. Awesome. Mm. Nicely done, Bob. Thank you. Um, Alison Frostick is next, and then something from Ruri Grieg. I'm going to, um, I've been learning this song, so the, tonight is its first outing, so fingers crossed. Um, and this is in celebration of uh, St. Patrick's Day tomorrow, and it's called um, Sweet Porter Down. As I went out walking one morning in June, I spied a fair damsel in the bright summer bloom. Her cheeks were like roses, her hair it hung down, and she came from black water near to sweet porter down. I stood in amazement as the breezes did blow and the blood in my veins like a river did flow. I thought her the fairest in all our land was bound the day when I met her near to sweet porter down says i my wee lassie i don't know your name she answered me shyly i'm afflicted the same says i mine's o'connor a name of renown she says mine's o'driscoll from the sweet porter down i excuse myself kindly i said if you please we will both take a ramble in the black water breeze i'm sorry she said but i can't go today i am searching for young lambs that have gone astray then i will go with you in search of your flock the sun it did dazzle on her dark amber locks we searched through the whole day till the sun it went down and at length we found them near to sweet porter down as we made our way homeward we sat down to rest and we watched the rock thrush on the black water crest i told her i loved her as the sun went down behind the green hills near to sweet porter down she said if you love me you must be excused for i am a poor girl so you must be refused i work hard for my living the whole year round and besides i would never leave sweet 
it water down. I won't ask you to leave it, the place of your birth, for I know it's the grandest and the fairest on earth. But if you will consent for to be my own bride, then it's married will be by the black water side. We went to her parents, they considered a while. Her mother looked on me, and at length she did smile. If Flora consents, so we'll consent to. And this married we were on the 18th of June. Come all ye fair maidens, assemble tonight, and marry your first love, even though at first sight. Don't marry for riches, or fame, or renown, for we're both living happy near to sweet Porter Down. That was lovely. Lovely. Yeah. 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 Lovely, Alice. Lovely. Well, what they said, really. <laughs> Lovely stuff. Okay, something now from Ruri and then Wendy, please. Okay, <laughs> another uh, Irish song about uh, weddings from County Donegal, but this one doesn't end up quite so well. Mm. I happen to be at an old lover's wedding. Everyone there had to sing a fine song, and who should there be but the bride's old lover? And these were the words that he did sing. It's man is the man been away seven long years, seven long years and returned home again. And it's I been gone but the two years only. And you fruit false and unconstant to me it's how can you sit at another man's table how can you sip of another man's wine and it's how can you lie in the arms of another and you so long a sweetheart of mine the new bride she sat at the head of the table every word he sang she minded right well and to stand it any longer she was not able and down at his feet that young bride she fell it's pick up your bride, young man, said the other. Don't you see her lying down low? And it's God be with the time that I thought she was mine. 
But now, kind sir, she is all your own. He picked her up in his arms most tenderly, carried her out in the garden so green, and with white sheets and pillows they've wrapped them around her, but never never brought her to life again. Come all you young men from me, take a warning. Pray pay attention and listen unto me, or you can always go a-roving in the grove or the valley, but never, never go between the bark and the tree. That is an interesting moral to the story. Never go between the bark and the tree. Like it. Okay, Wendy, it's over to you. And then something from James Eagle. Oh, Rory, that was really lovely. Um, I think it's just as well. I'm not going to sing an Irish song. Apologies, I completely forgot about St. Patrick's Day. So this is um, Appalachian uh, via Nina Simone. Um, anyway. Black, black, black is the colour of my true love's hair. His face so soft and wondrous fair. The purest eyes and the strongest hand. I love the ground whereon he stands. Black, black, black is the colour of my true love's hair. I love my love and well he knows. I love the ground where on he goes and if no more my love i'd see my life would fade in misery black 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 is the colour of my true love's hair. Oh, I love my love, and well he knows. Yes, I love the ground whereon he goes, and still my love I hope the time will come when he and I will be as one. Black, black, black is the colour of my true love's hair. Awesome. Great stuff, Wendy. Thanks. Now over to James and then something from Kathy Dent. Something completely different. Um, I think David Diamond's gone now, but he, he told us the story of the first shanty man. I'm going to sing the last shanty. <clears throat> 
Now me father often told me when I was just a lad, a sailor's life was very hard, the food was always bad, but now I've joined the navy, I'm on board a man of war, now I find a sailor ain't a sailor anymore, don't haul on the rope, don't climb up the mast, if you see a sailing ship it might be a last just get your civvies ready for another run ashore a sailor ain't a sailor ain't a sailor anymore well the killick of our mess he says we've got it soft it wasn't like this in his day when he was up aloft we like our bunks and sleeping bags but what's a hammock for swinging from the deck head or lying on the floor don't haul on the rope don't climb up the mast if you see a sailing ship it might be a last just get your civvies ready for another run ashore a sailor ain't a sailor ain't a sailor anymore well they gave us an engine that first went up and down then with more technology the engine went around we're good with steam and diesel but what's a main yard for a stoker ain't a stoker with a shovel anymore don't haul on the rope don't climb up the mast if you see a sailing ship it might be a last just get your civvies ready for another run ashore a sailor ain't a sailor ain't a sailor anymore well they gave us an oldest lamp we can do it right they gave us a radio we signal day and night we know our codes and ciphers but what's a semaphore a bunting tosser doesn't toss the bunting anymore don't haul on the rope don't climb up the mast if you see a sailing ship it might be a last just get your civvies ready for another run ashore a sailor ain't a sailor ain't a sailor anymore well they gave us a radar set to pierce the fog and gloom now the lookout sitting in a tiny darkened room loranda's navigation the sonar says how deep the jimmy's three sheets to the wind the skipper's fast asleep don't haul on the rope don't climb up the mast if you see a sailing ship it might be a last just get your civvies ready for another run ashore a sailor ain't a sailor ain't a sailor anymore now two cans of beer a day and that's your bleeding lot then we got an extra one because they stopped the tot so we'll put on our civvy clothes and find a pub ashore a sailor's still a sailor just like he was before don't haul on the rope don't climb up the mast if you see a sailing ship it might be a last just get your civvies ready for another run ashore a sailor ain't 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 a sailor anymore Yay! Um, I uh, I don't think we've had many choruses this evening. Actually, it doesn't feel like it. So that was that was great to have that, James. Thanks. Um, over to Kathy now, and then something from Paddy Hannan. Sorry, mine hasn't got a chorus either. I'm going Irish, but I just thought I'd show you these, which are "Hello, Children Everywhere." Two double CDs of all those lovely ones with Uncle Mac. Anyway, this is a sad, sad song. People still don't take it seriously. I sing this in memory of a lad from my son's class who at 18, when he left school, went with his mates to swim in a reservoir. Home came his good mates, but never came he. It was early one morning, Willie Leonard arose, and straight to his comrades' bedchamber he goes, crying, comrades, loyal comrades, let nobody know. It's a fine summer's morning and a bathing we will go to the lake of cool fin. The comrades soon came and who should they meet 
But the keeper of game turned back will he lend out. Don't do not venture in. There are deep and false waters in the lake of Coolfin. But will he plunge dead? And he swam the lake round. He soon reached an island, but it was soft, boggy ground. Crying comrades, loyal comrades, don't follow me here. For there are deep and false waters in the lakes of Coolfin. It was early, soon after, Willie's sister arose and straight to her mother's bedchamber she goes. Oh, I dreamt a sad dream about Willie last night, for he came to my room in a shroud of snow white. Will his mother arose and she ran to the lake. She called her son's name. Oh, she wept for his sake. Oh, sad was the hour that my willy plunged in, for there are deep and false waters in the lake of Coolfin. Oh, to see Willie's funeral, it was a grand sight. There were four and twenty young men, and they were all dressed in white. There were four and twenty young maids. They were all dressed in green, just to show that he was found in the Lake of Coolfin. Lake of Coolfin. Mm. Uh, thanks, Kath. Nicely done, Kathy. Thank you. Um, okay, something now from Paddy Hannan and then Dave Harbord. Are you with us, Paddy? Yeah. yeah. Um, this does have a chorus. It's not exactly an Irish song. I think it's uh, about a, a Scottish girl whose boyfriend has uh, in the army and he's been posted to Ireland and she's going to find him there. It's the cover of Kildare. <clears throat> and it's almost the time of year for the first line. Oh, the winter it has passed and the summer's come at last. And the small birds are singing in the trees. Their little hearts are glad, ah, but mine is very sad. For my true love is far away from me. And it's straight I will repair to the colour of Kildare. And it's there I'll find tidings of my dear. The rose upon the briar by the waters running clear. Bring joy to the linnet and the bee. Their little hearts are blessed, ah, but mine can find no rest. For well, my true love is far away from me. 
And that strait I will repair to the Karah of Gilgah. For it's there I'll find tidings of my dear. A livery I'll wear, and I'll comb back my hair. In velvet so green I will appear. All this I'll undertake for my own true lover's sake. For he lives in the Karah of Gilgah. And it's straight I will repair to the Karah of Gilgah. For it's there I'll find tidings of my dear. All oh, you who are in love and cannot it remove, I pity the pain that you endure. For experience lets me know that your hearts are full of woe, woe that no mortal can cure. And it's straight I will repair to the Karah of Gilder, for it's there I'll find tidings of my dear. Continuing the Irish theme there, thank you. Um, okay, something now from Dave Harbord, and after him, it will be Chris Lamb to take the floor, hopefully without his echo. Uh, hi, uh, yeah, um, this is a really weird song from the end of the 1800s somewhere. Um, it's not Irish, by the way, um, and it's, well, it's, it's just an odd song. It doesn't seem to have any accuracy in history or anything like that, but it was obviously somebody who didn't like Royal Amblers. Oh, the minstrels sing of an English king of many long years ago. He ruled his land with an iron hand of his morals were weak and low. His only outer garment was a dirty undershirt that managed to hide the royal pride, but it couldn't hide the dirt. He was wild and woolly and full of fleas, and he had his women by twos and threes. God oh, bless the bastard king of England. Oh, the queen of Spain was an amorous Jane, a lascivious wench was she, who loved to play in a royal way with the king across the sea. She often sent a messenger, by royal messenger, to ask the king to come and spend a night or two with her. He was wild and woolly and full of fleas, and he had his women in twos and threes. Gold blessed a bastard king of England. Now the king, he had a rival bold, his name was Philip of France, who swore he stopped this carrying on by the seat of his royal pants. So off he sent straight away to Spain to steal the queen away, to foil the king with a royal ring, all on a summer's day. He's wild and woolly and full of fleas, and he had his gloomy by twos and three. Gold bless the bastard king of England. When the news of this foul deed was heard within the royal halls, the king he swore by the shirt he wore, he had, had his rival's neck. So he sent the Duke of the Zippity Zap, who had a dose of the Zippity Clap, to pass it on to Philip of France all on a summer's day. He was wild and woolly and full of fleas, and he had his grimy by twos and threes. God bless the bastard king of England. Well, the queen grew very wary when she next saw Philip of France. She decided that the Frenchman had gone and lost his chance. So she said straight away, called our king and offered him her hand. And the sound of ringing wedding bells was heard throughout the land. He was wild and woolly and full of fleas, and he had his ribby by twos and threes. 
Go bless the bastard king of England. They had a royal wedding and his subjects wished him well. And the dancers, they all danced without pants and so did the king as well. His only outer garment was a dirty yellow shirt with which he tried to hide his eye, but he couldn't hide the dirt. He was wild and woolly and full of fleas, and he had his wimmy by twos and threes. Go bless the bastard king of England. Uh, uh. Okay. Great stuff, Dave. Uh, uh. Lovely. Lots of fun, Dave. Um, okay, now wild and woolly and possibly full of fleas, I can't speak for the rest, is Chris Lamb, followed by Kate Portal. Can I just test whether my, I've sort of got an echo here. You do, it's horrible. Right, in that case, I will pass. I don't think there's anything, I've put on, um, turn, on uh, turn on original sound, it hasn't improved it, so I'll no. pass. Thanks, Dave. Chris. Hopefully, you'll get it sorted out for next time. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was it would not be good if you sang like that. Uh, but yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so Kate, um, you're up next, and uh, followed by Ray McLaughlin. Um, Kate, by the way, I've put the uh, the details of your gig in the chat, so um, you might get a few more punters as a result of that. Thank you. Um, well, I'm going to. I thought I'd um, play a couple. But um, can you hear me? Not brilliantly there. All oh, right, can't be heard brilliantly. Oh no! No, you can. Oh, you can now. Okay. No, you can. Let, yeah. Um, I'm going to play. Uh, I think I'll play. Um, tripping upstairs, and oh, I don't know. I'll just see what happens after tripping upstairs. I love hearing a fiddle. Thanks, Kate. Um, okay, over now to Ray McLaughlin and then something from Charlotte Peters Rock. Thanks, Amanda. Um, I suppose I might as well sing an early song uh, and even one that mentioned St. Patrick. Uh, it's a true song, too. Uh, 
Patrick was a gentleman, he came from days and people, built a church in Dublin town and on it put the steeple. His father was a Gallagher, his mother was a Brady, his aunt was Anna Shaughnessy, his sister was a Grady. Oh, the Wicklow hills are very high, so are the hills of Hoats, sir. But there's a hill much higher, still much higher than the motor. And on the top of this high hill, St. Patrick preached the, ver- preached the sermon. He drove the frogs into the bogs and vanished all the vermin. There's not a mile of Erden's Isle where dirty vermin muster. It was there he put the steer for foot and murdered them in clusters. The frogs went pop and the toads went sp- hop, slap, dash into the water. And the snakes committed suicide to save themselves from slaughter. Nine hundred thousand reptiles blew, we fed on sweet discourses. The hindland them in Killaloo for soups and second courses. The blind worms calling in the grass disgusted all the nation. Down to hell with the holy spell, he changed our situation. No wonder that the Irish lads would be so gay and frisky. Sure, El Patty taught them that as well as making whiskey. No wonder that the saint himself should understand the stilling. For his mother kept the sheep in shop at the town of Enniskillen. Oh, where I but so fortunate as to be back in Munster. I'd be bound from the ground and never more would one for there St. Patrick planted turf, cabbages and praties, pigs galore, McGrama store, altar boys and ladies. That's it. Hey. That came to a very abrupt end, it seemed. <laughs> um, I wasn't ready for that. Thanks, Ray. Um, okay, um, so welcome now to Charlotte Peters Rock, a newcomer to Sharps in Isolation, if not uh, Sharps altogether. So looking forward to hear you sing, uh, hearing you sing, Charlotte. And after Charlotte, it will be one from Simon Prager. Charlotte, don't forget to unmute yourself before you start. Yes, right. Thank you for letting me in. Uh, it's a song I wrote in 1999 about Ireland's greatest export which is sad in some ways and good in others uh, now. Pat stood a lad at the Dublin. Michael's old man flew from Cork. Sean's granddad sailed out to Galway. They all left the land to find work. They are all scattered over the world, yes they are. They are all scattered over the world. Maeve's grandma fled in the rising. Maeve's great grand transported out. Kate's people came from the famine. Searching they drifted about. They are all scattered over the world, yes they are. They are all scattered over the world. When the community settled, no one was less than there was. All of their children make music, each from the land of their birth. They're all scattered over the world, yes they are. They are all scattered over the world. Pat Place, the White Rose of Athens. Michael, the fair lass of Rome. Sean sings of waltzing Matilda. They all love the country called home. Neve plays the bluebells of Scotland. Maeve sings Jamaica farewell. Kate dances Red River Valley. More of their lives I can tell. They are all scattered over the world. Yes, they are. They are all scattered over the world. Early ones keen for their island, each of them prospered at last, married and settled forever. 
Ireland was long in the past. They're all scattered over the world. Yes, they are. They're all scattered over the world. Sometimes the song in their dreaming tells of the sorrows long gone. Waking, they soon are forgotten. Ireland's lost folk have moved on. They are all scattered over the world. Yes, they are. They are all scattered over the world. They are all scattered over the world. Yes, they are. They are all scattered over the world. Lovely song, Charlotte. And you wrote that yourself, you said. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't hear you speaking, but I think you're nodding. So yeah, great. Um, please come back. Um, okay, Simon Prager now, and then it will be time for Paul Carter. Can you hear me? This is a very, very, very short song. I've, uh, I have dined well tonight, so I'm going to keep it short. Uh, this was written by Brendan Behan um, about the, uh, the king and queen, the newly crowned king and queen of England went uh, visiting Belfast in 1937, and uh, this is Brendan Behan's sardonic comment on the uh, on the occasion. It was not uh, it was not greeted with entirely unmixed delight by the entire population of Northern Ireland. Needless to say, out was on July the 28th in 1937 that a fire was lit without air or grate. And the flames leapt up to heaven The king and queen came sailing down The luck in the best of order And we welcomed them to Belfast town With a bonfire on the border The queen put a muffler around her neck Surrounded by her women The king walked up and down the deck Assisted by his G-men When he asked, what is that fire over there? The reply was there in order Sure it's Ireland united with loyalty But the bonfire on the border Some said the flames was Ulster's own And some that they were extraneous A county down man swore that they lit alone The combustion being spontaneous A man who loves the king and queen And believes in law and order Says the flames was orange, white and green at the bonfire on the board. That's it. It's on. That was fun, Simon. Uh, quite unusual for you. Uh, I, I don't mean it being fun was unusual for you. I'll stop digging the hole and move on to Pal. And Pal will be followed by Storm. Right. Um, oh, first, um, very happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody here who is from Ireland. And this is one of my favourite Irish songs. <clears throat> Farewell to the groves of Shillelagh and Shamrock. Farewell to the girls of old Ireland. May their hearts be as merry as ever I would wish them when far away across the ocean I'm bound. Oh, my father is old, and my mother's quite feeble. 
to leave their own country it would grieve their hearts so oh the tears in great drops down their cheeks they are rolling to think they must die upon a foreign ship but what matter to me where my bones may be buried if in peace and contentment i can spend my life oh the green fields of canada they daily are blooming it's there I'll put an end to my misery and strife. Then it's pack up your sea stores and tarry no longer. Ten dollars a week isn't very bad pay. With no taxes, no tithes to devour up your wages when you're from the green fields of America. The sheep run and shear. And the land is gone to Rochester. The handyman's gone, and the winder is of grief. Away across the ocean, good journeyman tailor. And the fiddlers that played out the old mountain reel. Ah, oh, but I mind the time when old Ireland was flourishing, when lots of her tradesmen could work for good pay. But since her manufactories have, have crossed the Atlantic, it's now we must follow to America. <laughs> and it's now to conclude and to finish my ditty. If ever friendless Irish man passes my way with the best in the house, I will treat him and welcome at home on the green fields of America. There we go. Oh. Hold on, Paul. Oh. Wonderful stuff, Paul. Um, now for maximum contrast in style, personality, and, and a continent even, um, we pass over to Storm. And after Storm, something from Marianne. Hi. So I was pleasantly surprised to discover that there's actually more than one song written about the Lawrence strike. So I am doing a piece I put together for Women's Month. Um, the poem is called The Working American at the 1976 Folklife Festival. 
She made his stay, talking till he agreed to call for a pencil and sign to Louise and his name on the aluminum frying pan ashtrays he made, saying, Happy Birthday, America, to show what his company could do, the largest cooking utensils manufacturers in the world. He, in turn, argued her into a dinner for two, his treat. If I have dinner with you, then I don't have to eat alone. Besides, he wasn't really working now. Or I'd have this all done in a minute, ten seconds. Make every movement count. Fill the mold with sand with just two shovel loads. Her friends nudged her and went on to other booze while she stayed to watch his metal glow. In Lawrence, when the starving mass struck for more to eat, and wooden-headed wood he tried the strikers to defeat, the Sammy Gompers wrote and asked him what he thought, and this is just the answer that the mailman brought. A little talk with Golden makes it right, all right. He'll settle any strike if there's coin in sight. Just take him up to dine, and everything is fine. A little talk with Golden makes it right, all right. The preachers, cops, and money kings were working hand in hand. The boys in blues with stars and stripes were sent by Uncle Sam. Still things were looking blue, cause every striker knew that, leaving that weaving claws with bayonets is hard to do. A little talk with Golden makes it right, all right. He'll settle any strike if there's coin in sight. Just take him up to dine and everything is fine. A little talk with Golden makes it right, all right. John Golden had with Mr. Wood a private interview. He told him how to bust up the I double double U. He came out in a while and wore the golden smile. He said, I've got all labor leaders skinned a mile. A little talk with Golden makes it right, all right. He'll settle any strike if there's coin in sight. Just take him up to dine and everything is fine. A little talk with Golden makes it right, all right. John Golden pulled a bogus strike with all his pinks and stools. He thought the rest would follow like a bunch of crazy fools. But to his great surprise, the foreigners were wise. And one big solemn union, they were organized. That's one time Golden did not make it right, all right. In spite of his schemes, the strikers won the fight. When all the workers stand, united hand in hand, the world with all its wealth will be at their command. And John Golden. Yeah. And Golden was the American Federation of Labor Organizers, wouldn't oh, yeah. well, organize the foreigners or women. And the song is written by Joe Hill. Yes. Good to have something direct from Joe Hill. Um, thanks, Storm. Okay, um, now it's time for Marianne. After Marianne, it will be Tim Radford, and then Caroline will close the evening for us. So over to you, Marianne. Um, it's worth checking. Can you hear me? You can. Okay. <clears throat> this song comes from Newfoundland, um, but it is about St. Patrick's Day. So I thought, oh, I better sing it. <laughs> Come all of ye true friends of Erin, come listen a while unto me. You'll find I'm a poor worn out creature, condoling here under a tree. 
while the heart from my bosom was torn. The truth unto you I declare. Young James was the flower of this island, and he's left me in grief and despair. When first I beheld this young hero, the hills and the valleys were green, and the leaves they were all in full blossom. Most beautiful there to be seen. As I sat in my long shady bower, these charming sweet notes I did play, and the blackbirds and thrush joined in chorus with me on St. Patrick's Day. Now my friends and my parents consulted, and they found I was too well inclined. False stories they told to my true love, to banish me out of his mind. Oh, but all that they said was a folly. Every morning and evening I'll pray. I'm in hopes for to greet you with pleasure. Once more on St. Patrick's Day. Now James was the flower of this island. The same I will never deny. And the beautiful words that he told me. I will never forget till I die. Oh, but now he is crossing the ocean. Every morning and evening I'll pray. I'm in hopes for to greet him with pleasure. Once more on St. Patrick's Day. Once more on St. Patrick's Day. Sinead. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
So Johnny went down all through the green wood till he came to a castle of fame, bright fame. He spied a maid and stood at the gate, crying, fair maid, do you want any broom? Green broom, fair maid, do you want any broom? Now this lady being up in her window so high, she saw this young man so terribly neat. She said to her maid, go down to the gate and call in this young man with his broom, green broom, and call in this young man with his broom. So Johnny, he entered this castle so great, and he entered this lady's room, gay room. She gave him a chair and bade him sit down, crying, you're welcome, young man, with your broom, green broom, oh, you're welcome, young man, with your broom. Now they sent for the priest, and married they were, all in this lady's room, gay room. Now, boys, we would drink. Now, what do you think? Is there nothing like cutting down broom? Green broom, is there nothing like cutting down broom? Green broom. Mm. Mm. I have a Spanish broom. Lovely stuff, Tim. And um, yeah, before Caroline sings for us, um, just the usual thanks to everybody for being here. Wonderful evening. I can't believe the variety of songs and other things that we've had this evening. <laughs> um, don't forget next week, John White's 101st birthday and uh, also the birthday of Sharps in Isolation. I think the the, the one good thing that can be said for that is hopefully it won't have another one. Um, so <laughs> um, anyway, thank you to Livy for muting, to David for compiling the list of songs. And David, if you are missing any uh, song titles, um, I hope people will put them in the chat for you now so that you can compile the list. And um, that that is it. And apart from Caroline. So, um, yeah, over to you, Caroline, to close the evening. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, this is not an Irish song, um, and it's a song I've sung a couple of times, times in the last few days, but it's, uh, it's a song by Trevor Peacock, who died a week ago. Um, he's best known in the UK as a character from the sitcom The Vicar of Dibley, but he was also an accomplished um, songwriter in the 60s, he wrote some pop hits, but he also wrote this song, um, which has often been attributed to being about the Sp Spanish Civil War. Uh, he said it was not, it was just a generic anti-war song. Anyway, it goes like this. I lay on my back with the sun in my eyes. Soon I will know what no other man knows. All of my life's been a fight against lies. Death brings the truth, and it's my turn to know. Send my mother a lock of my hair. Send my father the watch that he gave me. Tell my brother to follow me if he dare. Tell them I'm lost now and no one can save me remember me remember me send my love little yellow roses my father taught me that all men were equal whatever color religion or land Taught me to fight for the things I believe in. This I have done with a gun in my hand. Send my mother a lock of my hair. Send my father the watch that he gave me. Tell my brother to follow me if he dare. Tell them I'm lost now. 
and no one can save me. Remember me, remember me. Send my love, little yellow roses. I met my love in a garden of roses. She pricked her finger, how sharp the thorn grows. We made a promise that till death did part us, we'd never look at that wild yellow rose. Send my mother a lock of my hair. Send my father the watch that he gave me. Tell my brother to follow me if he dare. Tell them I'm lost now and no one can save me. Remember me. Remember me. Send my love little yellow roses. Remember. Remember me. Send my love little yellow roses. It's Trevor Peacock. Thank you. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Fabulous stuff, Caroline. Um, yeah, um, great to have every you and everybody with us this evening. It is um, it is nearly eleven o'clock. It is time to say good night. So um, see you all. I hope next week for John White's birthday and the Sharp and Isolation birthday celebration, such as it is. Um, we'll have a great time with Don, and uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye for now. Thanks all. Good, Good night. night. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks, ever so. Bye, everybody. Brilliant, brilliant Bye. night. Bye. Thanks for running. Bye. Out. Brilliant Bye. night. Some great songs. Thanks Bye. all. Bye, everyone.